the theme today is uh, thankfulness. Prepares us for the opportunities that the Lord brings our way to improve ourselves the God way. To prosper even as the John, 3 John 2 says, to prosper even as our soul prospers. To prosper, prosperity is not a bad thing, but prosper even as our soul prospers. So to illustrate, uh, to illustrate the importance of living this new year 2020 uh, with right attitudes of thankfulness. Thankfulness is a huge blessing if we are, if we cultivate it and grow it and we bear the fruits of thankfulness. To and to illustrate how important it is uh, or to be thankful, to learn to number our days, I pick this up from a great man of God called Leslie Weatherhead. Uh, he once calculated the average length of life with hours of one day. Did you get that? Hours we are these days, 60s, the new 40 and stuff like that. But I want you to be real, right? And Dr. Leslie whether whether head calculated it like this. Okay? He concluded that if your age, if you did one, one day, 24 hours, if you are 20, the time is 11.34 a.m. Those of you are in the 20 range. So if you are 30, the time is 1.1 p.m. And the 40s, the time is 4.8 p.m. And the 50s, the time is 6.25. Those of us 60s is 8.42 p.m. And when you are 70 and beyond, that's a good lifespan that the Lord has given and it's at 11 p.m. Still, there is a full hour left for you, if we are in that range, to, to be built up and to and to develop the attitudes of thankfulness and to grasp every every opportunity that comes your way, whatever age range. This chart put things in perspective for me, and I trust it will put things in perspective for you as well. Because the reality is, we may not have as much time as we think. The Psalm 90 and verse 12 reminds us, teach us, to shall we read it together? Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. And the Living Bible says it this way, teach us to number our days, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are, help us to spend them as we should. So days are very precious. Is that okay? Days are very precious. They are not to be wasted. Time is very precious because time comes from eternity, from God who is outside of time and time returns to eternity. And we face that in that little span, we face that precious bit of time. So life is filled uh, with opportunities here. Really. And uh, what we do with these opportunities that come our way is the big question. Do we let them slip by, say, maybe next time? And, or we say, there is another day. I will go the next time, to the next session, to the next time. Or, uh, or you really seize them. Be wise. When we were asked to be wise, isn't it? Because life is short, be wise. Do we seize the opportunities or do we say, Time. Uh, because we shouldn't put it off for too long. The things that we ought to be done, the things we know we ought to do, we shouldn't put them off for too long because life is marching by. As you see, for this 2020, already two Sundays have passed. We are left with 50 Sundays by. So remember, life is marching on. Ephesians 5, verses 15 and 16. Say something like this. Shall we read it together? So be careful how you live. Don't be like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And there is the Ecclesiastes, you know, the preacher, uh, the philosopher, the preacher, the dreamer, and he says in Ecclesiastes 11 something like this. He says, Shall we read it? Plant your seed in the morning, keep busy all afternoon. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. Okay? 
So what opportunities do you need to seize today? Consider that. What are the opportunities you are going to seize today? Take advantage of them thankfully while they are still available. That's the, that's the key. Take advantage of the opportunities that God puts into your life. Right? They can be work related, maybe family related, maybe community related, or most importantly, kingdom related. Make use of the opportunity because it's God who puts these opportunities close them to our level. But we, we have to work with him. Or he has to work with us. We want to think that I always say God, we can do nothing without God and God will do nothing without us. Shall we say that louder? With more conviction and persuasion? We can do nothing without God and God will do prepares us to reach the opportunities that God gives us to improve ourselves. See, we may see that opportunity as not a great one. We may see the dark side of it. But remember, whether we see it as dark or bright, it's a God given opportunity. You have heard of the two prisoners, isn't it? They were behind bars, right? One guy looked up and saw the Saw the yes. Saw the stars. Yes. Don't be afraid. Let's talk. Right? One guy looked up and saw the stars. The other looked down and saw the mud. See, it's how we look at the opportunity. So we create the right attitude for ourselves by having a thankful heart. Okay? So today's uh, text is from Genesis chapter 41. We read portions of it just for to make it easy for us because it's a long chapter. And the context is the text is that Joseph was a young Joseph. You ever heard of Joseph, everyone? Okay, don't get me strangely. Everybody knows Joseph? Yes, very good. Joseph was the apple of his father's eye. Right? And uh, about Joseph. Uh, face cycle of events, right? He was uh, he was hated by his brothers, they jealous of him, hated, they sold, put him in a pit, right? And then they sold him off as a slave. And then he found himself uh, being top of the top of the chart with a man called Potiphar, and then for his accusations and back in the so cycle, right? Cycle of events. And without being an angry, discontent person, Joseph chose to be thankful and sought the good of those around him even in the prison. You find he had two fellow prisoners, right? Well, keep him fellowship, prisoners, and then you found the story of one, they were both, there were two prisoners, the comparer and the baker of the Pharaoh, both of the long faces, they had seen dreams. And Joseph said, hey, what's distressing you? And then he interpreted the dreams. Did good for them, even in the prison. He didn't say, I can't be bothered with you. I have my own, own troubles. He didn't say that. He interpreted it good, even in a difficult place like a prison. Isn't it? Prison is not an easy place, is it? You can hear these days different, uh, different uh, Recordings that go on during the news. News. There's no news. We can only hear certain recordings, and that's all about trying to put people behind bars. Prison. Is there so, so? Prison is not a nice place. So in, in the prison, you have a spirit of the prison. But Joseph overcame that spirit of the prison, and he worked for the good of the others. A spirit of thankfulness. So you and I are going to read the scriptures. Genesis 41, for those of you who are not here at 9.30, I want to tell you this service begins at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. And uh, those of you who are not there, let's read it together, okay? One, two, three, come. Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven more than ten cows that came up. 
God, God who is in control of the events. And what stands out in this whole scenario is the calm bravery of Joseph. Young man, right? Straight from the prison before this awesome August assembly, right? With all the regalia and the silence and the hush hush and all these guys with swords and just picture it. You know, sometimes we just read through it without the context. So here he is, Joseph, and young fellow, right? And he is suddenly thrust, this situation is thrust. Trust upon him suddenly. He never expected it. He was not forewarned and suddenly he is dragged out. So here you watch him calmly handling it. Right? Calmly handling it. And then, because for me, may not have been common in that fertile land, the Nile Delta. Maybe it was very fertile land, always floods over and the sediments and you know your geography. Uh, I do a class with the teens on Sunday evening and they can't stand geography. <laughs> Whenever I tell them the importance of geography, they can't, they get upset with me also. <laughs> and I kind of lose them. So, well, you know that the Delta, the Nile Delta was very, uh, for me, a very, uh, very, it's a fertile place. And maybe, maybe they have not yet ever heard of a uh, famine coming from <coughs> by the ancient people and, uh, and especially when the Nile is going to fire, that was their God. And they threw those the children many centuries later, three, four centuries later into the Nile, they were virtually making offerings of boy child to the Nile. To appease the river Nile, their God that they worship. Behind the fact, not only the fact that they want to eradicate the Jewish population, they also wanted to make offerings to the river Nile. So Nile was really important for the elders.
in the party besides wings and silver wings and chains and chariots a wife was also thrown in right uh, apparently from a very connected priest we learn Joseph has no options where the ring would be stayed go in the party okay so in a moment it seems God had changed everything the Lord often works my brothers and sisters in the world like this even to me and to advise for us with a thankful heart to watch out for the workings of God in our nation, in our family, in our own lives. Because if we watch with the Holy Spirit, you see, we, we, we can spot the Holy Spirit's movements and we will not be surprised, shocked and disappointed. Like it's a presidential election, I don't know for whom you voted, right? If you want, I can tell you for whom I voted. But so much of shock, surprise, right? And everyone will be analyzed, those who expected other results. So watch with the Holy Spirit because God is always in God. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And it's good for us to watch out for His ways, for what He is doing, when sometimes we least expect it. So going deeper, Pharaoh related his dream, Joseph interpreted it, and the outcome was Joseph's all good dreams of greatness are being fulfilled. Can you see this? Pharaoh explains the dream, Joseph interprets. What's the outcome? His dreams of greatness. Remember, many chapters before we read 41, for those of you who don't know the story, please go home and read from Genesis 37, I think, and catch up on the storyline. Then Joseph said he would be, he, he gave some dreams to his family members, and they were dreams of being great. So we can see uh, God's hand in action. Pharaoh's vision was actually a prophecy from God. And it required a response that only a true man of God could give. Right? Because remember true rulers, they don't like to hear the truth. They like to hear some fancy stuff. So here was a man, the anointing of the Lord was upon him speak the truth. So remember brothers and sisters, God speaks to rulers in their dreams. Because when they are awake, so many people are speaking to them. So many human voices, but when they sleep, God invades their dream world. And it, he invades their dream world upon your prayer and upon my prayer. So for our president as well. So when Pharaoh told his dream to Joseph, he added some details which were not there when he Magicians. If you go home and read it for yourself, you will find this. Mainly it was about the manner in which the seven god did cattle the way they swallowed up the fat cows. Only mainly about that. And yet those thin god cattle, they swallowed up the fat fellows, but still remained basic, right? And it was like an ominous sign. Bad sign we say, isn't it? In our country, bad sign. So it was a bad sign. Although this is something we don't normally notice, the old in the world is one God of frequently. Sometimes use people who are not his own, who are not from his own chosen race. People like who? Right? They were from another race. He was from another race. And that God sometimes used people uh, from another race like the Pharaoh. To start up something significant, an action that's very that's going to be very important in that nation. Do you get that? God sometimes uses. So be watchful. And God is using the unbeliever. Be watchful. So, so when we are thankful for whoever, whatever, we carry a light spirit. We carry a light spirit. Is that okay? And that helps us to walk with thankfulness. When we are thankful for whatever happens, whatever comes wrong, when we have a thankful spirit, we will see whatever I can comes from the end of the road. Man cannot put me down. Then we carry a light and spirit. The spirit of the Holy Spirit. The light and spirit. So, let's coming down to Joseph's speech, right? He spoke to Joseph, to 
the Pharaoh, it was a powerful discourse. Few words, few lines, very powerful. He immediately indicated to Pharaoh that he had listened to Pharaoh very carefully. When he said, the dream was one. So he said, the dream was one. Did you understand that? So he indicated, he got him Joseph's Pharaoh's attention. And small features like these may have been partly the reason why Pharaoh responded so well to Joseph. Recall the teenage Joseph that we met many many years previously, many chapters previously. He was not one who was interested in listening to anybody. Not to the members of his family, not to his father, not to his brothers. He wasn't willing to listen to anybody at that time. Okay. But that got him into trouble. That got him into the pit and into slavery. That got him into trouble because he was not a good listener. But now you can see over the years he had learned to listen through the years of suffering service. Note that he had learned to listen. Because of times we like to speak, but in listeners, I think we don't get that many good marks. Right? We all want to tell our story, but to listen to another story is also a great place. So, this thing about listening, because we know when we re repeat the story back once we have listened, especially when we learn counseling, when we have to listen to people's grief, when we have to listen to their complaints, when we have to listen to their grumblings, sometimes we know this is totally unfair, this is totally wrong. But the first thing is listen to them. And then repeat back what they should, what interpretation should be given to them. So while explaining Pharaoh, to, uh, while Pharaoh was explaining Joseph was relating it back to Pharaoh. Pharaoh realized this young Pharaoh has listened to me and, and heard my concerns. He listened and he has heard my concerns. So let's take time to listen because there may be an opportunity in it. Right? Listen to be able to listen. Because Joseph showed what today is called empathy. I don't know whether you are taught those things from Shiva about empathy. Be able to listen and by relating back to Pharaoh what he had said to him. We may find that repetition of someone's story is totally boring and as I mentioned before, totally unfair, but it can be the doorway for our common and significance. I'm emphasizing this because in ministry over these many years, I have found I used to be a very poor listener. Touch my heart, and I realized that the 
Pharaoh had given him new garments. Right? He was wearing slavery garments from the prison. And now he is being given new garments. And remember, as a teenager, he had worn his special coat made by his dad. That many colored coat that his dad favored him with. And something which marked him out. And in his own young mind, he felt so great. You know? He felt so good about that many colored coat. See, when your kids were young and you gave them something, and only they got it, you know, they went around, strutting around, feeling so good, accepted, feeling significant. And that's just exactly how Joseph felt when his dad gave him that many colored coat. And that was the very thing that put him into trouble. Because he was so proud and being pocketed with it. He strutted about and he showed it off to his brothers, the colors, and uh, the brothers got so jealous of him. And now, and it was that same shredded coat that the brothers brought back with blood stained animal blood and said, Your son is dead. That made the dead weep from that day. He mourned, saying, My son, my head will go down to the grave. The new fine clothes represent a new face of the story of Joseph. A symbol of a man who had learned wisdom and patience and a thankful attitude through, through suffering and sacrifice. No, we don't like suffering and sacrifice, isn't it? Do you know what to do? I don't like it. It's like suffering. Mental suffering. Physical suffering we can put up with. But mentally it may be put down, to be condemned, to be misunderstood be spoken behind this all that is feeling too hard to bear. But here's a new face in Joseph's life. He's been given a new set of garments. So within this passage there are some very helpful points for our consideration. I'm going to wind up fast. Firstly, it demonstrates the fact that we have to wait for God's timing thankfully. Especially if we believe he has placed a call on our lives like that of Joseph. We have to wait for God's timing and we have to wait thankfully. Because unless we wait thankfully, we will wait discontentedly, grumblingly, ungratefully, unthankfully. Why me, Lord? I've done all this. Why me, Lord? It does nowhere. But if we wait, Joseph knew from his teenage years that the Lord had called him to greater things. And having greater, he sees this opportunity at the time God gave him. He may have thought when he was in Potiphar's house, Oh, this is my moment. This is what God promised me in the dreams. But that was not the moment. God had a greater plan. So let's not sit down for lesser things. Let's not sit down to Potiphar's house. Because God has a plan to take us to the Pharaoh's house. Right there and take us to the destiny he has for us in the books in heaven. And the moment he was in Pharaoh's, he had no other place to be get to, isn't it? And he knew this is the moment, and he ceased in the moments very thankfully. And I think I have I must mention this. I have served the Lord long enough to know that many people are called by the Lord in their younger years. God calls many in the younger years. But many younger people also discount, devalue the call or the call they felt or the God experience they had, the dreams that God had given them, the prophetic word that God had given them. You see, as time goes by, as years catch up, they you devalue, you forget about it. And to upset, you don't reach the point of fulfilling the God dreams. I have seen so many younger people hastening, you know, losing patience, running ahead of the times, and then losing it all. It's sad. You know, it used to make me angry, honestly. But now I'm older. You see, you know, my age, I'm at eight something or year, you know, somewhere there. Now I'm wiser.
experience, your God encounter. Don't forsake it. Get back to it. If you moved away from it, get back to it. Be in the place that Joseph, like Joseph, where God's fullness will be your heart. Because if we are to be the Lord's servants, we need to work closely to the call God has given us. And you can see Joseph served in the world. He served in governance. He served in the marketplace. He was not in the temple. He was in the world serving as God's emissary, as God's representative. And that's what God got. But the main thing is he aligned himself to many years of suffering, experience, and he was in right alignment. Then next thing, there is a great deal as I told you about listening. Be honest, stating the obvious and following through with what needs to be done and the action. To be honest, even when it is not very palatable. You know when it is, it was difficult to tell Pharaoh, look, this is going to be a difficult time. It was a warning to Pharaoh, isn't it? There's going to be real bad times. Those fat cow, cows are going to be eaten up and destroyed. So you have to do something about it. So sometimes it's difficult, unpalatable, uncomfortable to speak the truth. Like the seven years of famine after seven good years. And I want to caution you as a family of God from Ephesians chapter 4, which a sister was praying uh, about some concerns we have about wrong teachings that are coming into our city. I want to caution you. And the scripture says, 4, 14 and 15. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. This is St. Paul speaking to his, one of his favorite churches, the Ephesian church. Don't be tossed about by every wind of doctrine, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects who is the head of the human Christ. That's our call. Don't get carried away, especially in the city that will come in the next uh, few weeks. Watch out. Be careful. Don't be carried about by just charisma and promises and stuff like that. Be rooted in the word of the Lord. And you will not be shaken. Because our faith is not only for this life, a few short years, but our faith before us. Our faith must outlast us. Our faith must go, we must live out our faith. Our faith must outlast us. You get that? You know what I mean? Yes. Because the revelation says they are, they are labors follow after me. Our faith must follow after us even after we are long gone. Because if we learn to be speak the truth, even when it's not very comfortable, it's a sign of our spiritual intelligence and maturity. That we face issues that are before us and work with God thankfully to plan our way through all the pitfalls, the challenges that are thrown at us. Do you get me? Do you get, get that? It's things that are face up to the issues. So Joseph, I'm going to conclude first, Joseph knew that Pharaoh had different religious belief than himself. Nevertheless, Joseph from the outset gave thanks to God for the dream interpretation and did not take credit to himself. Very important. He gave thanks to God. How might each one of you, a believer, advantageously credit God in your workplace? Who you are. How will you credit God in the employment process? Or will you keep silent? You know, I heard a testimony by Ian Malisi here. Yes, yes. Last uh, week, uh, this week, I heard a testimony. Nirmal said he worked in a certain uh, company. He still works for 20 long years there. And it's hugely other religion. Very strong about the other religion. Never had a place to any purpose. But this year it was commented about Nimai 
that everybody notices that he had a spirit of excellence there, that he never downgraded, downsized anybody, but he always saw the good in others. And this year, they had some prayers. He said they had prayers, but they had prayers. You know the prayer too. Maybe next year, we could go there and say prayers. That's what I felt in my heart when I was listening. Thank you for carrying that excellent testimony. I feel so good when I heard this young man giving that testimony of credibility that the workplace had. So likewise, Joseph works for an employer, not only of a different religion, but different political ideology, different moral beliefs, but note the quality of his work. Note the part his excellence and thankful spirit played, not only for himself, but in the salvation of the nation of Israel. God's plan is being worked out through that spirit of thankfulness and excellence. Because many of you will frequently find yourselves working with and for men of different religions, political beliefs, moral beliefs, but what would a believer like yourself learn from the experience of Joseph? In the employment circumstances, you find yourself. What can you learn? How will you apply this lesson? A thankful, a thankful attitude will promote you always. Be thankful for what comes your way. That brings promotion. We are created by God to do good works, says the scriptures. And he invites us to outlive our lives, not just in heaven, but here on earth. I want to ask you, as I ask myself, what will I be remembered for after I am long gone? What will you be remembered for after you are long gone? If you are your children, your grandchildren, your colleagues, your family of God, remember you for being a thankful and content person. St. Paul said that this was his testimony. He said for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And he said I know how to abound, have much and also to be a waste. To have nothing. Whatever state I am, I know to be blessed to God. You can be testified like St. Paul. One more thing, not only did Joseph interact with God in finding the interpretation for Pharaoh's dream, he placed value and work on himself. And he saw himself being useful in a very dicey situation. That is also important. When we thankfully see ourselves work in the Lord, irrespective of life's challenges, irrespective of what's happening right now in our life circumstances, then we can liberate others, liberate our own selves with the gifts that we have. I trust you will keep this message of thankfulness, attitude of thankfulness, that it will not only be acknowledged, but it will come down to your heart. It will cross the valley between the brain, the head, and the heart. You get it written in your heart. All times, as you go through this coming week, as you go through the coming months, you will find challenges, choices coming your way. And at all times, you remember Joseph, like for being thankful. And finally, Joseph marries an Egyptian. Right? The lady was thrust upon him. And as half Egyptian children, he's employed by the Egyptian Empire. And after his promotion and marriage, Prosperity riches, it was the final word virtually in the nation. The one thing is that he retained his faith. Not only at the beginning when he told Pharaoh, this is God, this is not of me, but even in the pinnacle of success, at the height of promotion, he still retained his faith. You know, when his, when his first boy was born, he named him. Named him Manasseh. He named him Manasseh in Genesis 41 51. And he said, God has helped me, made me forget all my troubles. So you can see he was a troubled boy. But he said, God has made me forget my troubles. As he looked at the little baby boy, his wife, 
and it's half Egyptian wife or it's Egyptian wife war. He said, God has been, as the little fellow came out, he saw his little smiles. That's what he said. He named him Manasseh. Next boy, when he was born, named him Ephraim. As God has, God has been, been fruitful in the land of my affliction. So he knew affliction. He knew sorrow. He knew the troubles. But that's how he named these two boys. And finally, finally, when his brothers came over to the land, and, they, and his dad died, and they were covering and before him, and said, now God, he get at us. Then he told them in Genesis 51, you, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. He never forgot his God in the promotion. How are you? When you are getting promoted, how are you? Are you thankful to God? Is your commitment to God being kept? Those promises you made to Him, your first vows, you say, Lord, I will do this for you, I will do that for you. Are you able to keep your family prayer time? Are you able to read the scriptures to your children? Are you keeping a fellowship with your husband and your wife? Now you are getting promoted, you are finding, you are getting significance. How are you handling God's promotion? Think about these things right through this year. May 2020 is good vision. May you keep this vision before you. That in the height of promotion, in the height of success, when prosperity is tapping at the door of your life and you are walking in the midst of the great goodness of God, would you still say, God meant it for good for everyone? May the Lord give each of us a thankful heart for what it is today rather than fight for what it was not yesterday. Did you when I was at the meeting last Friday night? I clearly heard this. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God who was there yesterday is the same today. What is today rather than fighting for what was not yesterday? You know? Are you fighting for your rights? Are you fighting for this and for that? That was not history. Or are you rather choosing to be thankful for today? May we develop a thankful heart by appreciating, placing value on people around us instead of taking them for granted. Because no one will live forever anymore. They will pass through our lives and then it is too late. May we find something positive in every situation. May we have a thankful heart so that we can be promoted from the prison to the palace. May how many among, I ask this for myself, how many around me will follow Christ because of an unceasing testimony of a thankful smile written all over my face in 2020? How many will follow Christ because of your unceasing testimony of a thankful smile written all over your face in Jesus? Because this is reality. This is not just hate knowledge. This is not just doctrine, but this is application of the truths of God's word. May the Lord bless you as you move on in 2020 with a thankful spirit. May He bless us as a family of God. May we put right the things that, have, that fell off in 2019 that we lost hope of. Our family relationships, our family priorities. Maybe make those priority in our lives. Give God the glory.